Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allah is near the juggler vein, then why do we need intercession? How will we survive without internet if spiritual connection with shaykh is not yet developed? <laughs> Learn quick. Yeah, inshaAllah. Allah Zawajal is everywhere. So this, this is not about Allah Zawajal is, is not near us. Allah Zawajal is, is closer than your jugular vein. Allah Zawajal is the qudra and the power within your atoms. So your entire wujud is, is with that power. But what Allah Zawajal wants for us and this type of teaching is a manner, is mannerisms, the adab. That's why these are schools of adab. For marifa is a way in which to approach. So the whole path is based on approaching, not, not just saying something. Allah owns the universe, okay then we stop. Allah is closer to you than your jaggy vein, then stop, there's no more marifah, there's no more learning. It's in this path of marifah and this is what Sayyidina ibn Arabi would describe that when you see a mountain at a distance you say it's black because you don't see the color of it, you say yes. So do you think every mountain is black? No. So they said the path of marifa is to draw near to it. So when Allah destines a servant to draw near to me, you're going to go through his he, you're going to go through his lamb, you're going to go through another lamb and then the alif moves away from you. Because Allah's a treasure wanting to be known didn't say he's going to be known by you. So then there would be no marifa if we just simplified everything by saying Allah, which everything is Allah, everything owned by Allah, everything manifesting by Allah, then everything is finished, there's no more course. But to keep the course going and keep this understanding of drawing near, Allah wants you to make sure, don't think you're coming to me where we're going to be face to face and you're going to be breathing my air, Allah doesn't breathe, that you're going to find a direction for Allah, Allah has no direction. So he's clarifying, the way of marifa is not kindergarten, marifa is that you're going to approach, you're going to be given a, a permission to approach. As a result of that Allah clarifies, come through hidayat because kalima Allah, alif, lam, lam, hay. That's what everybody understands is Allah, come through hidayat, right? Come through hay, come through hidayat and guidance, use your five senses, come to the first lam which is the mulk of dunya because you have to come from dunya to go to sama. Then come to my second lamb into the heavens. Do you think you got to me? That's why the alif is showing us, no, no the alif is actually separate and not attached. So as much as you draw near to Allah his alif is moving away. So that all you understand will ever understand is the circle of creation. So this is the way of marifa and this is the way that Allah wants to make sure the servant knows that they're not going to be a partner with Allah and to take your path with humility. Those whom talk a different way there is an arrogance in the teachings that the person who taught the, that system of teaching, those people whom teach that madhab of Allah, Allah, Allah they're taught by shaitan. And that was the madhab of shaitan and that's where you, you see where that got shaitan, got him in a lot of trouble. When Allah said, bow down and pay ihtiram for Sayyidina Adam, He said, I'm not doing any of that, I'm out of here. And as a result of not listening to Allah He teaches that belief on earth, you don't need anybody, come out here and pretend you're with Allah. But he's not the khalifa and he was… When he started to talk like that Allah threw him, but threw him back where? Back to the ocean of Muhammad Rasulullah, there's nothing outside of that, there's nowhere for him to go. But he wants to teach that belief so that people will be corrupted in their understanding and as a result they won't pay a ihtiram and they won't pay a respect. And that's where the big guna, the big danger is. They begin to think, oh it was he, he was like this, he was like that, I don't need anybody, I just need this and that's not correct. 
Allah wants us to understand where are you. Inna lillah wa nalayhi raji'oon, inna lillah wa nalayhi raji'oon, not inna Allah, lillah. You come from lillah and to lillah you go back, <laughs> not you come from Allah. Allah never said, you come from me and you're going back to me, astaghfirullah. So alhamdulillah, this is all the way of marifah that Allah want to perfect the understanding as you're approaching. So when you go towards the mountain, you surprise, oh there's so much on this mountain, so many colors, so many rivers, so many streams, so many trees because you're drawing near. And that's why this uloom and these knowledges are from the people of marifah because they drew near and Allah expanded and taught them all these realities. But you ask somebody from a distance says, no the mountain is just black but there is no black mountain. Everything has a color, everything has life, every, everything has an abundance of realities. But if they don't know it, they don't talk about it, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa ta'ala. Can Nadi Ali be recited by someone who has not joined the Naqshbandi tariqah? <laughs> yeah, Nadi Ali was not, not for the Naqshbandi tariqah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. anybody could join it. I think they're the… Who was the shaykh from Pakistan that gave the whole awrad like 6,000 this, 4,000 this, there's a whole wazifa we have of how many times to recite it to relieve different difficulties. And it's basically a, a asking for a madad of Imam Ali Salam. So alhamdulillah it's immensely powerful and uh, brings a muhabbat. All of these teachings when you're making the madad of Prophet to holy Ahlul Bayt and holy companions, it's a teaching of muhabbat and love that asking for their support, their nazar and a sign of humility to Allah Ya Rabbi ana abdukul ajisu da'ifu miskinu zalim. That I'm, uh, I'm under the oppression of this dunya, I'm weak and I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi send me a support. And Allah likes humility and Allah then sends a support to those whom are humble. And Allah dislikes greatly arrogance. So when somebody feel themselves to be self-sufficient and they don't need support, it's a sign of arrogance. Right? We're not self-sufficient because that hypocrisy we see all our life. If you're self-sufficient and your car breaks down, you're self-sufficient. Don't call police, don't call tow truck, don't call nobody. Pick your car up and go home because you're self-sufficient. No, but people pick and choose when they want to ask for help. So be humble and ask for help all the time in everything we do. Ya Rabbi, please help me, help me, help me take my test, help me to get my work today. Help me to, to get my rizq today, help me to eat, help me to do all these things, ask for every type of help and Allah says that this is a humble servant. They may have immense power but they show themselves to be nothing and to be humble inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of good and bad dragons? Why is shaitan sometimes referred to as a dragon? Yeah because he's hoping to be a dragon. But he's a snake. So the snake was a look like a burak in paradise and went to the outer gate of paradise and shaitan talked to him when he was cast out by Allah that let me into your mouth I want to talk to Adam and his wife. And shaitan entered the snake's mouth. And the snake then went closer to Adam and Eve and began to waswas to Hawa. And as a result later of the punishment and Allah punishing, He punished the snake that, why did you let shaitan into you and I punish you to be and that became his reptilian form. So when he became a reptilian he had to slither on his stomach, Allah took away his honour of feet and legs. As a result of his image of the snake. It has to do with the satanic understanding of shaitan that what Allah cast the image of shaitan to be. So anytime you see the image of that snake it's in reference to shaitan. And their understanding of the jinn that 
have that same image all from shaitan. They put it on their logos all from shaitan. That's why we said the dunya who has the asa like Sayyidina Musa salam, but the snake because they're the fake who. The real who we don't have snakes. So that's the image of shaitan. Then when he found out that awliya have dragons, Sayyidina Malik and his zabani are defenders of awliyaullah upon the earth and each wali when assigned the oceans of Alimul Qadr that Allah will bestow upon them the oceans of knowledge and the oceans of power, Allah safeguards them with their paradise reality The Sayyidina Malik is guarding them and his zabani are all around that shaykh to go after those shayateen. So he thinks he wants to imitate that but he puts the image of a flying snake, he's not a dragon. The dragons are for Allah's might and majesty, they have flying snakes, <laughs> not the same. And the, the zabani are infinite in number and infinite in strength because they're with Izzatullah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Is it possible to raise the frequency of those around you or anyone in the world by sending good thoughts and visions to them? Sure, sure. Anytime you concentrate and meditate and when you're in the zikr and you meditate and bring the people whom you love into the meditation and into the zikr that you'll be calling upon their arwah and their reality to attend the majlis with you, keep them in that and asking Allah dress them, bless them, that Prophet intercede for them and it definitely has a, an effect on those people. And that's the system in which the shaykhs are guiding, their soul is bringing people into the association. And then those whom are watching physically and participating physically that's one reality but their guidance is through the ocean of the souls. That through the souls they call those souls to be present in their association and as soon as their majlis starts it's in the world of light with the souls that they have called. That's why the distribution of their face to people, as soon as somebody looks at their face the shaykh has grabbed them and it's on his fuluq and that's why Surat Yaseen describes fuluqul mashhoon because their souls are loaded ships. Loaded with what? With souls, save all souls, S-O-S, save our souls, so yeah. And wa khalaqnahum mithluhum, huh? That Allah said, we have the big fuluqs and the smaller fuluqs, that that's the whole concept of, of the shaykhs is that when their face is distributed people just look at it for a second and curse them lest they grab them. Ah, what's this bearded guy? <laughs> Doesn't matter, right? Because their soul is pure. The bad mouth person is not what they're interested in, but the soul is pure. As soon as they look at him, the soul knows paradise, knows this is a Muhammadan representative, and the soul becomes attached to that person. And through their soul's light, they're dressing. That's why their association. If imagine if, if the shaykh's light like this, how many millions and billions of atoms can be around him and it wouldn't be more than, it's not even this you can't say, right? What's the size of an atom? If, if you blew up one atom, they say it's one dot compared to the whole distance of the earth or the moon. The size of an atom is so small, how many could fit on, on a penny? Yeah, the number is not… is ridiculous. They don't need but more than one atom from a person, they don't have to bring your whole presence. Your light is just one atom comes into their fuluq and every dress that come upon them they're dressing that atom. And that atom goes back to the, the origin of the person and dresses them. And that's why I said that was the importance of visiting maqams and definitely visiting Masjid al-Nabawi because as soon as we go there 
your soul and your atoms are, are with Prophet immediately deposited to the soul of Prophet Why Allah is not a mystery. Every other Prophet you're wondering where they are, you have to look for their golden cup. Allah said, there's no mystery with the truth. The truth is lying right there, go and visit him As a result your soul will be with him and dressed and blessed and that is the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah that's why we go and visit and we go to associations and we attend these majlis so that to receive the lights of the dress and the blessings of these associations inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa What is the reality of meditating while listening to different sound frequencies? Can listening to these 432 and HZ frequencies change my reality? <laughs> yeah you know too much YouTube <laughs> that, that you know that those, those things are good for them to come to us but we don't go to them. You know those people who, who play with bowls and <laughs> that's nice because they don't do zikr right? So they're looking for anything other than rap music and the radio station. So they sit around because <laughs> it gives a sense of uh, peace and autumnish, uh, calmness. But if you have zikr why would you need the sound of a bowl? And those frequencies in the wrong hands and wrong understanding actually can cause an immense agitation. So you go down to lower frequencies that you can feel pain in your heart. Those are not sounds and we don't understand really what those sounds are, what creatures are making those sounds when you're playing on those devices. So the most pure and the most perfected is zikrullah, so zikrullahi akbar means that when you praise upon Allah recite Qur'an, mix durood al-sharif, that's lights that nobody can understand, this straight from paradise realities. If you just say, Allah, what type of power that has on the scale for Allah Say all your sayat if you put on a scale and you say, Allah, what's going to weigh more? Allah So the, the power and the might of dhikrullah is not something that can be compared with anything else. They do that because they're lost and our job is to bring them to the dhikr of Allah But not we go there. So not comparable, not comparable. <coughs> As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Is the advice from parents the guidance from Allah? Yeah we don't want to answer that one <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to get very bad emails from parents. <laughs> oh mother is the paradise under the mother's foot. So that's it, we'll pass on that one. Okay. Can as salaamu Sayyidi Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Can someone who is not Naqshbandi wear the Naqshbandi taweez? Absolutely not, <laughs> yeah of course you can. <laughs> he says, these are all barakah and blessings from heavens and those are for everyone, everyone to, to enjoy it and to, to benefit from it. And alhamdulillah that once you benefit from something then your, your natural disposition should be telling you that, oh. Uh, I read the du'as I benefit, I wear the taweez I benefit, I'm watching the live broadcast I benefit, so why I don't just uh, be Naqshbandi? <coughs> no, next question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Um, I watch Sayyidi's video, videos on 5G phones, quantum chips and the jinn world. Should I be concerned if I've already been using a 5G phone for ne nearly a year? I know we have, we have 4G, we don't have 5G <laughs> yet. They say it's 5G but I don't believe it yet. No, these are, these are again knowledges that uh, to teach people what's happening, right? If, if we are ignorant of what's happening and what is a computer, what are the jinn worlds, what are they trying to do, how are they trying to occupy this world, then we're ignorant and become enslaved. But once the truth will set you free. Once you understand the truth of something then you've incorporated Allah's izzah and might that, Ya Rabbi I know what they're doing and with your might and majesty one protect me and let me now use it against shaitan. 
And that's why we asked all our people, why don't you share links? You know, if, if you can't write an article then alhamdulillah you can share one, it's a finger, right? You just go click and then you say, share. But what type of gift is that from Allah That you share the haqqaiq, you share the reality. Instead of using this only for ourselves, we're using it also for da'wah, to propagate da'wah, to raise funds for the charities, to do all these good things. So keep our life to be balanced, that's why they're encouraging people, please help, so send a, a, a link, share a link, otherwise it's only for the dunya and then that becomes a problem in which people are enslaved to it all day long watching it and then they begin to watch inappropriate things. But once you begin to use it for Allah then you're also getting the barakah and the blessings of the da'wah and the different practices and different things that we're doing inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, What is the reality of intuition? Intuition? To have foresight, right? What was the other one we were asking the other day? Intuition and deja vu. Oh, deja vu. Yeah, that's what somebody had asked about intuition, deja vu. Remember that anything we're doing and the teaching is from the world of light. The soul and the world of light has no time. The past has already been written, the future has already been written. Nobody would imagine that Allah's waiting for tomorrow to write for tomorrow and then He's going to write the next day and then He's going to write the next day. It already been written and light is actually constant and doesn't move, there's no time. So this ancient book of light has already been written. <coughs> this dunya is just pages, so we're on one page, tomorrow another page, tomorrow another page. But the soul is from the world of light. If Allah wants the soul to have an intuition, it can see the pages back or it can see the pages forward. It's already been written and that Allah gives for the servant as experience, many by these experiences became spiritual. Because it understood for them, well, what's, what we said was the word just we just used now? Deja vu. Deja vu. Why? How, how could you possibly see an event in the future? Because Allah wants you to know, this book has been written, you're just experiencing the dunya part of it. That's why when you enter, <laughs> da -da -da, timeless reality, right? Why? Because as soon as you sit in tafakkur and meditate, you're closing your dunya reality which is timed. As soon as you operate from your soul, what happens? Your soul is timeless. The more you do that, the more your intuitions are coming. That's why the shaykhs have a very strong intuition, right? They're not dunya based, they're light based. As a result of light based, these pages are already written. So their intuition comes that on this page there's going to be a problem, don't do that with that person. Don't invest in this, don't get like that. That's why when you're, in, you're asking for advice from shaykhs, when it's important and they have to use their intuition, they're getting a signal from the world of light that this was the past is something like this and what's happening in the future is not going to be good or it's going to be good. So that's from the world of what we understand of intuition, that world of light is giving the guidance. Because Allah wanted people to understand that they're not physical beings, they're actually spiritual beings. So deja vu is that you, hey I've already experienced this. That moment comes and said, I, I remember this, I saw this in a dream or, or in a flash of a vision, this would happen, this would happen and actually occurred. Why? Because Allah wants you to know that page was written long ago, it's anciently been written. But Allah describes in Qur'an, we can change the book anytime we want. He can erase and write, rewrite whatever He wants and we describe that in time travel. That as, as Allah 
can fold the page and he can rewrite the whole of a destiny. So Dajjal will be using the concept of traveling in time. Why? Because whom he wants to take off the earth, he has sent his shaitans to go back in time to find that person and to kill them. And when he kills them they won't appear in the future, right? They, they move through this spectrum of energy and they go back to who your jad was, who your grandparent, grandparent. If that one is taken off the earth you no longer appear here. And Allah describes in Qur'an that allows it and we'll rewrite it, we'll rewrite the, the whole of that creation. All the subsequent creations will be written in a flash. If the person was an architect all the buildings they built will won't be in existence. So because of that fitna that Dajjal is going to bring upon the earth then how he preserved Islam and Qur'an, right? So the reciters of Qur'an are called what? Not memorizers but hafiz. Why? Because they're guardians. If you didn't call them memorizers you would have called them memorizers but they are hafiz of Qur'an, they are the guardians of Qur'an. So when this fitna changes these are hafiz, you can't kill them all. So one, one verse or one letter changes in Qur'an, how many billion hafiz you have or hundred of millions of hafiz you have will immediately come and say, no it's been changed. So that's Allah understanding and writing all of these fitnas of Dajjal that would be coming. That's how Islam has been preserved, that the Qur'an its reciters are hafiz. And then those whom are pious they're called not masoom but what are they called? Mahfuz. They're guarded. Guarded from what? So that when Dajjal knows who they are and who they are with Sayyidina Mahdi their whole file is encrypted all the way back to Sayyidina Adam that there's no shaitan that can go into their system and go and try to kill their grandparents so that they don't exist. Their whole file is an encrypted lock file and as a result they are mahfuz on this earth. Imagine what shaitan would do if he knew who they were. And that's why Allah just say, hey, he plans, I plan better, don't worry I already foresaw all that, I wrote this, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Is there a way to identify who is your friend and who is pretending to be your well-wisher? Who is your friend and who is pretending to be your well-wisher? Yeah, that Allah is your friend, Sayyidina Muhammad is your friend and your shaykh is your guide. Everyone else they have ego and character. That's why we don't try to focus on other people. That Sayyidina Isa comes in our life and teaches us that I was sold from my companions, I had twelve, I was sold by one of them for a bag of coins. If, if they sell Sayyidina Isa for a bag of coins, they sell me and you for less than the bag. We've said that for twenty years now. So when we know that in life don't put much heart into anything. Put your heart into Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that's it. The shaykhs are the guides, you get your guidance and build your love for Sayyidina Muhammad and everybody else with not the big expectation that always remember shaitan will come to people and they have deceit and bad character and… But the dunya want people to put too much onto people and too much responsibility onto people and then they say, oh I really trusted this person, I really loved this person, I really believed in this person and this was my best friend. But they sold Sayyidina Isa salam, he had twelve companions, showed them immense miracles and still one of them sold them for a bag of coins. So the odds are not very good. <laughs> It's one in twelve, so if you have twelve friends one of them is going to sell you. <laughs> you have three friends and yeah, but the more friends you have the more likelihood you're going to be sold. Yeah, that's the dunya. 
So when you don't have any expectation and you put your love in the right place, Allah never going to disappoint you and Sayyidina Muhammad never going to disappoint and that's the, the, the glue within the heart and within our existence inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>